Hi, Kat here from Standing Stone Kennels, and today we're going to talk about operant conditioning. We throw terms around like positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement a lot, as well as positive punishment and negative punishment. Those terms can be kind of confusing for people because everyone automatically wants to associate positive with good and negative with bad. Well, that's not the case in operant conditioning. Positive actually means adding something to the situation, whereas negative means taking something away from the situation. So you want to think about it more like a math equation. Adding, subtracting equals the desired response that we're looking for. So with positive and negative reinforcement-based training, we're actually looking to either add something to the training situation or take something away from the training situation to get that behavior to increase so that that behavior is exhibited more frequently. Whereas with positive or negative punishment, we're either adding or taking something away from the situation um, to get the behavior decreased so that it's not exhibited as frequently. So Ethan's gonna help us a little bit with showing some examples of both positive and negative reinforcement training. We use positive reinforcement training all the time when we're teaching puppies new behaviors like sitting or even introductory field work. And people actually use positive reinforcement training on themselves all the time and probably don't even know it. So some examples of positive reinforcement in training is offering a food reward for a behavior that we're looking for a puppy to do, like sit. So the puppy will actually start exhibiting that sitting behavior more frequently to earn that food reward. We use clicker training a lot, if you've watched any of our videos, and the puppy will sit, hear that click, and get the food reward. So that's positive reinforcement. We can also use positive reinforcement in drills like our positive pigeon drill, where the puppy needs to exhibit the woe behavior that we're looking for, and then they get to chase that released pigeon. Ethan's gonna show us some great examples of these. Now for people, an example of positive reinforcement training on ourselves would be, we get dessert if we eat our entire meal. So you better eat your vegetables. negative reinforcement training when we're trying to reinforce an already learned behavior. So let's talk about recall. Puppies a lot of times start to get bold and confident and want to run around, sniff things, and not always listen. Well, we can use negative reinforcement training for recall. We'll use a collar, apply stimulation or vibration, and then ask for the cue that they already know but might not want to exhibit. Then they feel the collar the entire time until they get all the way to us shutting off the collar by doing the desired behavior we're asking for. So they're learning to shut the collar off, take that stimulation away by doing something that they already know how to do. Another form of negative reinforcement training that we all use is waking up to an alarm. We might not want to wake up for work and we might not wake up for work on our own, but setting that alarm, we hear that sound, we get up, we get out of bed to turn off that alarm. So we're training ourselves to get out of bed with negative reinforcement training. Now we're gonna talk about punishment-based training. So we have, again, positive punishment and negative punishment. We're gonna give some examples of what positive punishment would look like in training. So if your dog does an undesired behavior that we want to diminish and have happen less frequently, we would add something to the situation as a form of correction or punishment. So your dog gets off their dog bed when they haven't been released. At that moment that they step off the dog bed, we would actually apply the collar pressure back until they're on the dog bed. The same can be said for healing with your dog. If your dog's sniffing or pulling on the leash, anytime they're not in a proper healing position, they would feel a correction on the leash. You'd give them a sharp tug when they make a mistake. So we can use positive punishment to diminish behaviors that we don't want to happen, like breaking off the dog bed when we haven't released them, or pulling on leash when we're going for a walk. You can also use positive punishment for your kids if they're maybe being a little bit naughty and they get a swat on the butt. Aiden's gotten a few spankings, I will tell you that. So the last quadrant of operant conditioning that we wanna talk about today is negative punishment. Negative punishment can also be used in dog training, but it's a little more difficult to apply properly. Timing. Timing is always so important with dog training, but timing is even more important with negative punishment because your dog needs to understand that the unwanted behavior 
that they exhibited is associated with the negative punishment. And dogs have a very short attention span, so this can be somewhat difficult. However, a great example of negative punishment in dog training is if a dog is working on a steadiness drill, whether that's steadiness in a blind or steadiness in the field, and they break early, then they don't get the reward of making a retrieve. We like to call these denials. So a dog does something wrong, and they don't get the retrieve for that. So negative punishment gets used a lot of times with children because they can associate the behavior that they did wrong with the punishment. So a kid breaks curfew or gets a speeding ticket, they're going to lose a privilege that they want, whether that's hanging out with friends or the opportunity to drive that car. So taking away those privileges will hopefully diminish those unwanted behaviors. So people sometimes get confused negative reinforcement training and positive punishment training. But it's all about timing and when you're applying that collar stimulation. So with positive punishment, the dog first makes a mistake and then gets the correction. Whereas with negative reinforcement, you're first applying that stimulation or vibration with the collar, then asking for the cue until the dog does the desired behavior. So it's all about timing, which all of dog training is all about timing. So all of these quadrants of operant conditioning are very important in dog training. And if used properly and in conjunction with each other, we can definitely strengthen behaviors that we want to happen more often and weaken behaviors that we don't want to happen as often. If these training techniques are used together and used properly, you're going to be able to train a very consistent, well-conditioned and well-behaved dog. Thanks for watching. We're happy to answer your questions. So if you have more about this video or any other videos you'd like to see, let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give us a like and subscribe so you don't miss any great content. I'm Kat the Dog Trainer and thanks for watching.